Our next speaker in this session is Teresa McWhite. And Teresa will be telling us about the avoidance of farmyards by European badgers in a medium density population. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you, Steve. Um, now, I'm actually um, just presenting this paper today. The lead author, um, my colleague, Enda Mullen, who works for the National Parks and Wildlife Service, couldn't be here. So if I do stumble a bit, um, it's because um, she should really be here giving it. OK, so this um, farmyard study is also part of the Wicklow N11 Badger study, which I talked to you about earlier, where we've tracked um, over 70 badgers today to see what effect a major road realignment project has on the badgers in its direct vicinity. So obviously we're here in Dublin, and this is uh, where the Wicklow N11 Badger study is, just south of us. Um, on a close-up of the study area, it's about 40 square kilometres, and you can see there's a major road running down the middle of it, the N11, which is the national primary route from Dublin to Wexford. Um, the road has just recently been upgraded from single lane uh, national primary route to motorway going through Greenfield site. So um, we've been looking at the badgers before, during and after the road. Um, this farmyard study is all based on data from before the road going through. So the badgers are caught in cage traps, anaesthetized, weighed, microchipped, tattooed, blood sampled for TB, pharyngeal swab for TB. We take DNA, we give them a clinical exam. They're vaccinated with BCG. They get a GPS collar if they're large enough and if, if their head to neck ratio is suitable. Um, but once we've captured them, we, we mark them with sheep spray so they're easily identified as recaptures. And then they're placed in a recovery box to wake up from their anaesthetic in peace. So um, you've seen these maps earlier on. Uh, this is one year's worth of data from those GPS collared badgers. Um, each different colored area kind of represents um, social groups and you'll see in some places like here you'll see layer upon layer upon layer which means we've got three different individuals in that social group collared. Um, the road also acts as a natural uh, territory boundary as you can see it runs through here. <coughs> so the question is do badgers avoid farmyards? Well the aim of the study was to establish if the recorded visits made by badgers to farmyards were as frequent as would be expected given the number of farmyards available to the, to the badgers. And we also looked at the influence of season, gender, and social group on the visits. Um, and this is the first study um, on the use of different types of farmyards by free-ranging GPS collared badgers. <coughs> so in this study, we had 40 badgers, 21 males and 19 females, uh, coming from 12 different social groups. Um, three years' worth of data, this time divided up by season. So we had 12 seasons from spring 2010 to winter 2012. Um, the study area was 41 square kilometres. Within that, we had 58 farmyards, and the yard area was measured as 2.7 kilometres squared. So we got just under 31,000 GPS fixes from the Badgers and 66 GPS fixes were located in a farmyard. So 0.21% of all our fixes were in farmyards. 17 of the 58 farmyards were visited, and 20 badgers, 10 male and 10 female, provided at least one GPS fix within a farmyard. Um, we developed a, a farm bias index, and it was calculated for each badger using its home range size, 95% MCP, for each season of the three years for which that badger provided data. So um, the farm bias index basically measures whether the badger used the farmyard as often as expected, given the availability of farmyards within its range. So we're going to just take um, an imaginary farm bias badger and we'll say that this is the home range for that badger in, say, autumn 2011. And within that badger's home range, there were four farmyards, making up, um, say, 10% of its home range. So you would expect that badger, uh, just by chance, to be using 
um, the farmyards at least 10% of the time. And that's what this imaginary badger has done. Um, we then also looked, that was for autumn, so we know that in winter the range size is smaller. There's only two yards within uh, that badger's home range for the winter, making up 20% of its home range. So the farm bias index would suggest that the badger should be using that, badger, uh, that farmyard at least 20% of the time, and our imaginary badger here has done exactly that. So we can then calculate whether the actual number of visits is more or less than expected. And this method was developed by New et al. Now this is the results that we got for our 40 badgers um, over the 12 seasons. <clears throat> that red line is the um, all-important line. All right, that's what we expect. If the badgers are using uh, farmyards in a random fashion, uh, um, as expected by chance. So anything above the line is a positive score and would show preference for farmyards, and anything below that line is a negative score and shows avoidance of farmyards. So you can see that, sorry, here we go, first bit of stumbling. So, um, yeah, we can see that for all our badgers across the 12 seasons, we actually have um, avoidance. So the badgers use the farmyards less than would be expected given their availability. Now, was this avoidance significant? Um, was it statistically significant? And yes, it was in nine out of the 12 seasons. And then in three of the seasons, um, it was just as expected. Um, so we wanted to look at the seasonal influence then. In British uh, studies, Garnet et al. found that there were peak visits in July. Tolhurst et al. and Judge et al. found that there were more visits to farmyards in April, May and June. Now, our results showed that there was no evidence of seasonal differences. Um, there was at least one fix recorded within a farmyard for each of the four seasons in each year. And the only exception was that winter of 2010, when we had 13 days of snow, temperature minima of minus 12.2 uh, degrees Celsius and 42 days of air frost, where the badgers really weren't moving much. We had no hits in farmyards during that winter. Um, <coughs> rainfall, um, I'm not sure what you'd call this, whether this is um, light drizzle or heavy rain. We call it a soft day in Ireland. <laughs> and <laughs> notice the absence of light as well. <laughs> it's very dark. Um, this, is, this is field work in Ireland. So Garnet et al. in the UK found that there were more visits to farmyards during dry weather, possibly due to lack of earthworms. Um, so with the Irish um, data, we know that our badgers have a uh, different diet to <coughs> British badgers and they're much less reliant on earthworms. Um, however, we did have a slight increase in visits um, in winter 2011, which was mild and dry. Um, but as you can see on that box plot chart, um, it's, not even, it's not even straddling that zero line, so it's not more than would be expected by chance. So we found that there was no um, influence of rainfall. Um, gender, um, does being a male badger make you more likely to go into a farmyard? Well, of our 20 badgers, uh, 10 males and 10 females provided at least one GPS fix within a farmyard. Now, Tolhurst et al. found that more males than females visited farm buildings. Um, we found no gender difference in our study. Um, influence of social group. Now, we know that badgers are social animals. Um, and does that mean that if you have um, a visiting badger in your group that you're more likely to visit uh, a farmyard or a particular farmyard? Um, even though they are social animals, um, we have shown that they are independent foragers, so they all head, head off independently to different areas to forage. So we had nine social groups in which we had more than one collared badger. And in six of those groups, we had a number of them visiting farmyards. But generally, they all use different yards to their set mates. So in our study, farmyard visiting badgers in a social group did not influence other collared members of the same social group. Um, I mentioned that we're the first um, study to look at all types of yards within an area and which ones the badgers visited. 
So we had 10 different types of yard in our study area, and they're all listed there from cattle yards, uh, cattle tillage, disused, equestrian, sheep, tillage, animal shelter, machinery yards, horse and sheep yards, and cattle and horse yards. Um, the entire yard area made up 27.4 hectares, 58 farmyards, as I mentioned earlier. 17 of them were visited by badgers, so 29.3% of the farmyards were visited. Um, there were 66 recorded visits by 20 badgers. The most numerous farm type in our study area would be cattle farmyards, and they also make up the largest area. The second most numerous type of yard in our area would be equestrian yards, and they make up the second largest area. So there were 12 visits um, to cattle yards, 13 if we include the one that was a cattle and tillage yard. And that was, they were made by uh, sorry, 11 badgers. However, there were 30 visits to equestrian yards, 6 to sheep yards, 3 to tillage yards. Um, now, what we need to find out is just how significant were those visits? Um, were they more than expected or were they less than expected given what was available to the badgers in their home ranges? So um, this chart shows whether the actual number of visits made to each class of farmyard was above or below that expected given their availability to the badgers in terms of both size and um, area. Sorry, in terms of number and size. So positive values were um, where visits were more often than their availability would predict. And you can see the most, uh, the most frequently visited yard were equestrian yards. Next were the disused yards, and in third place came the sheep yards. Negative values, these yards were avoided more than their availability would predict. And what really shocked us was that cattle yards were avoided most of all. So just to conclude, Irish badgers actively avoided all farmyards. Badgers avoided farmyards on cattle farms even more than any other type of yard. And there was no pattern of seasonal use of farmyards, unlike in Great Britain. There was no evidence that males and females used farmyards differently. And there was no connection between belonging to a particular social group and visits to farmyards or to particular farmyards. So if a badger was going to visit a farmyard, it was more likely to visit an equestrian yard or a disused yard than any other type. Thank you. Thanks very much, Teresa. Any questions? Yeah, there's a number over here. Sorry, quick question. Did you look at the difference between dairy and beef farms? Because you'd obviously see a lot more movement going on in the dairy farms than you would in the beef farms. So I would think that would discourage the badgers from going to those yards more than... Um, no, we have, about, we have about equal dairy and beef in our study area, and there was no difference. Dick Sibley, a vet from Devon. We heard earlier on that uh, Irish farming is very dependent upon grazing and grass systems. In your opinion, do you think um, farms would be more popular to badgers if there was a ready supply of food such as maize, corn, grains, and total mixed rations that were common in the UK? <laughs> that would only be my opinion. I, I, I couldn't answer that. Obviously, our, our cattle are um, housed during the winter, so from about November through to April, they're in winter housing, and the rest of the time they're out grazing on pasture. So the farmyards wouldn't really be that attractive when there's no feed in the yard. Um, but you know, then we would, ex we would have expected our badgers to be visiting the yards more often in winter when there was feed available, and we didn't find that. Um, but I, I couldn't honestly comment about whether if there was more feed available throughout the year, whether they would you know, start visiting yards or not. I don't know. Uh, uh, Roger Blowy Gloucester, similar uh, question to last time. Is there any difference between TB positive and TB negative badgers in the rate at which they visit farmyards? Because 
um, in our area, people think that the disease badgers are more likely to go into a, a farmyard, as Dick has said, for maize, because it's easier to forage. Yeah. Well, um, I mentioned earlier that we now know that five, uh, five out of our 40 badgers were TB positive, um, and they, d they, were, they, they did not um, visit, badge or visit yards any more frequently um, than, than the rest of the badgers. Okay, the last one here. Would you like, uh, Stuart Carter, Liverpool, would you like to speculate on the role of equine yards then? Are they, are they, are they involved in transmission from badger to badger? Is the horse involved? Is the horse vet involved? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we'd, we'd really like to know that too. Um, or is it, is it the different type of feed in, in horse yards? We, we, we just don't know, but it's a really, really consistent finding. And, um, you know, and, and even our, our, we actually have, we have a, a very big racing stables um, in, in our study area. And it really, really annoys them that the badgers are rooting um, on their gallops, <laughs> because obviously these are very valuable animals, and they can, um, you know, <laughs> twist an ankle going into a, in, into where the badgers have been rooting. Um, genuinely, uh, we're not sure wh why why they have this preference for horse yards, but it's really consistent. It's it's consistent that they go into horse pasture as well, even when the horses are there. Um, whereas they avoid cattle at pasture. So there's a special link with horses, um, and, and we're not sure what it is. It could be to do with horse manure as well, the fact that horse manure is more likely to sustain different types of um, uh, larvae and beetles or um, insects. So do we need more horse yards to reduce the spread into cattle? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On that note, uh, we'll draw it to a close. Thanks very much again, Teresa.